Hi, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. Today, I have a table runner for you, a whole entire table runner, except it's not quilted, but that's okay because, you know, I could just quilt it another time, but I'm trying to keep the video short. <laughs> there are options with this table runner, so I will explain those options throughout the video, but just so you know, it does take scrap charm squares if you have leftover charm squares, or you can continue on making this bigger and bigger and bigger or more rows or a whole entire quilt out of this idea. Table runner itself is just some extra charm pieces, three quarters of a yard of a background. And if, like I said, if you choose then a half a yard of a border print. So it's up to you how it's made. Again, just follow the directions and see if you like it. And if you do want to make it, it should be self-explanatory. It works quite well. The table runner is very cute. It turns out, I forgot already. Let me edit that in. It turns out 21 and a half by 51. So it is a pretty large table runner, but you don't have to have it that big. And you will see why as we're constructing this. This table runner has a name. It is called Card Table. And you're going to see why as you watch this video. It is very fun. It's very fast. You can have this done in a day or less if you're me or like me. <laughs> and I think you will enjoy this one. So sit back, relax, grab some charm squares and some background fabric and some border fabric if you want. Again, like I said, it's in the video and make this along with me. I will see you at the end of this video. Bye for now. All right. So for today's project, we are making a table runner and we need three quarters of a yard of a background. I don't have three quarters of a yard of what I wanted to use as this background because I'm using scraps, but I do have three quarters of a yard folded twice of a cutoff of backing fabric. The next thing that you are going to need is 11 five inch squares. Now these are just leftover squares you could use or you can cut them from some fat quarters or any kind of scrap that you have. I am using 11 flowered printed scrap pieces that were from my five inch pre-cut square bins that I cut my own five inch square. The next thing you're going to need is a half a yard of a border print. So I have this to use for my border print. Again, I'm going with a flowered theme, as you can see with all of these fabrics here. So three quarters of a yard of a background, 11, 11 five inch squares, and a half a yard of a background print. And most of these numbers are a little overestimated just so that you have enough in case you make the wrong cut, except for the five inch squares. Those are the accurate ones. All right, so what we're going to do is move everything out of the way and get started with some cutting. Okay, so for our background, like I said, I'm using a background that is not quite what I needed, but it is. So I'm going to use with what I have. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my background into two and a half inch strips. So let's cut some two and a half inch strips just like this. I'm going to line my big ruler up and cut two and a half inch strips off of here. I'm going to cut five of them for now. So we're going to cut number four and one more for my fifth strip. That's two and a half inches. There we have it. I'm going to move the rest of this out of the way because I can use it again in a little bit. And now we're going to take and sub cut all of these two and a half inch strips. And again, I don't have selvage to selvage. I have what's left from the bottom of a quilt and I am going to subcut these now. So I'm going to go ahead and line them up nicely on a line just like this. And I want to cut the selvage off at the same time because the selvage was running along the whole end. Like I said, it was from something else. All right. And now what I'm going to do is line my ruler up, cut all the selvages off at the same exact time. Just like that. And I used a line on my mat for this. And the reason for that is because my ruler is only five inches. 
but whatever ruler you have, we're going to go to six and a half inches. So this is five. We're going to put, use one of the markings from the mat and we're going to come over like this. And now that makes six. So let's come over with the ruler now to a half an inch, just like this. So here's my six and a half, just like this. I'm going to go ahead and make the cut. And now I only need to, because I'm not using the, well, actually we'll just cut, move those two out of the way and cut six and a half again from just these two, because I didn't have full, if you have full strips, cut four. I only had um, half, so I cut five. All right, so I already have my half here. We're going to go over one inch. So that makes five, six and a half. And I'm going to go ahead and cut six and a half inch right here. And I'm not going to throw any of these away because these can make two and a half inch squares into my scrap bin. All right, now that I have my pieces cut, we're going to take these and move them out of the way. Technically, we only need 20 pieces, but I overcut and I do that purposely and you'll see why soon. We're going to move that to the side and we're going to grab our five inch squares. So bring your five inch squares over. What you need to do is choose one five inch square you want to be your center square. And you'll see why soon. But we're going to go ahead and stack all these up nicely. I'm just going to stack every single square nice and neat. I wouldn't have had to do this if I didn't have to have shown you all these fabrics. But I showed them to you anyway. So we're going to cut five at a time. I'm going to go ahead and line that up on there. And then let's line these five up just like this. And four. Oh, it looks like that one's kind of shy, but I'm still going to use it anyway. Why? Because I can. All right. Here we have it. So my one is going to stay solid like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut in half two and a half inches, just like this. Cut it in half. And I'm going to do that with the second one as well. So two and a half inches. Cut it in half. I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to cut this now two and a half. So I'm going to line this up just like this, two and a half, and line this up just like this. I kind of use, since I'm standing in a weird position, I'm using the markings on the ruler to do this just like that. And now we're going to take all these extra ones, the two and a half inch squares, one from each pile, and move those to the side. Now we're going to take these guys. And we're going to go over to the sewing machine with those and our six and a half inch pieces. And we're going to go to the sewing machine and I'll show you what to do. All right, here at the sewing machine, here are my background two and a half by six and a half inch pieces. And then here are my all stacked up. You can see I cut them in these two piles like this, but I'm just stacking them up for now so that I can chain piece everything through and make it a little bit easier on myself, which I suggested to do for yourself as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these like this and like this. I might have to add a couple more to that pile right there and to this pile. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach one of these to the end of each of these and one of these to the end of each of these. So I'm going to put those aside and start with these guys. And what I'm going to do so I'm going to put them right sides together. I'm just putting my background on top, but you can put the small square on top if you'd like. I'm going to make sure that I have a good stitch length. And I'm going to sew it through. Again, right sides together on one end of my two and a half inch square. And I'm just going to sew it through. And I'm going to repeat this whole entire thing just by putting all these on here just like this. And I'm going to do it with the big ones as well. And I'm going to just chain piece all of this through here. If my thread would stop breaking. It's really driving me insane lately with this thread breaking. I'm trying everything I can, but it still keeps breaking. So this or it's orophil. It's not that it's a bad thread or anything. It's just this spool has been giving me nothing but trouble. Now I can't even thread the darn hole. Go figure. Let's try my threader. I didn't go try it again. Under and it gets stuck every time. <laughs> 
goes to show when I'm on camera, it's hard to do this kind of stuff. All right, let's put that back under here again. And <laughs> so my quarter inch seam. All right, from here on out, now that all that craziness is out of the way, I'm just going to keep sewing these. And when I'm finished with the two and a half inch squares, I'm going to move on to the two and a half by five with my six and a half inch. So I'm just going to go ahead and put you in fast forward during this process. And I just realized that I sewed that one the wrong way. That's what happens. Look at that. <sighs> anyway, I'm putting you in fast forward while I do this. <laughs> Okay, so now that I've made a complete mess, and I'm pretty sure you saw that, we're going to go ahead and press all these now towards the dark fabric, not my background, towards my charm square pieces. I'm just going to press them all nicely. I was struggling there. Not only did I sew two pieces together, but I sewed a one backwards like I'm really just yeah I am not having there are days that we should not be in our sewing rooms and maybe today was one of those for me but I'm going to get this done I'm going to show you how to do it and it's going to be lovely and you're going to like it and you're going to want to make one too so I'm going to put it back and fast forward with some tunes while I do this Okay, so I have all these pressed. I'm pretty sure I know why I'm struggling today. It's because my head hurts and maybe I should not sew on days my head hurts, but I need to. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna take all these now. And we're gonna put them back with their corresponding piece because mine got out of order. Um, let's see, this one goes with that one. And that's only because I was struggling sewing them together. So they got out of order. So I'm just going to put them back in their matching sets. I'm going to try to keep them in their matching sets. That's what we want, our matching pieces together. All right. That one goes with this one. This one goes with that one. This one goes with this one. And this one goes with that one. All right. Now they're together. Let's move them out of the way, shall we? All right. Just like that, they're together. We're gonna take that one five inch square that we took out. And we're gonna put that right here. And we're gonna place it on point, just like this. And for this step, I should maybe make sure I have like a clean surface up here. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. So we're gonna decide a color order here. I'm gonna put this one here and I wanna start with a dark. So this is gonna go here. Oops, oops oops, like that, and that is going to go there like this. You see what I'm doing here? So I'm going to lay it out first the way I want it, and then I'm going to start sewing it. So I want a dark one here. Oops, it would help if I was putting them on here correctly. Duh, there we go. Like, okay. So they're going to lay like this. <laughs> There's overhang. Don't worry. I got this, guys telling you all right say i want a light one next so i'm gonna put this guy here and that guy there and say i want a dark one next we're gonna put this guy here and that guy there just like that 
And then we're going to do the opposite side. So I want light again. And then I want dark again. So we're going to put that guy there, that guy there. And this is how I'm going to be sewing these together. All right, so I want light again on this side. And notice I'm putting my two and a half inch square ones to the top and my what were the five by two and a halfs at the bottom. All right, we're going to put this guy here. So I like swapping sides like this. And then we're going to put this blue one here. Oops, right there and right there, just like that. And we're going to come with this last one over here, that one down at the bottom, that one up at the top. And now I need to figure out how I can make a whole view. Oh, look, there we go. <laughs> so there's our whole view. We're going to start sewing these on here now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this five inch square from the center. And I'm going to start by taking this center piece right here next to it, this lower one. And I'm going to sew this on here, right here. And then I'm going to open that up and I'm going to attach this next one. So I'm going to leave all these in the place I need them. And one at a time, I'm going to grab them and start sewing them. And then once I get the one whole side done, then I'll move on to the other side. So let's go over to the machine so I could show you how this works. Okay, so we're at the machine. My first piece looks like, oops, I didn't mean to hit the camera, looks like this. And this is my five inch square. I'm going to go ahead and put this right sides together. I'm going to align the top, but my bottom is going to hang over quite a, a, a big amount. And I'm going to sew this with a quarter inch seam, just like this, until I get to the end right here. And now I'm just going to go ahead and veer off. So when I mean veer off, I came off like this. And now I'm going to start by pressing this first one in towards that five inch square just with my finger right here at the machine. Now I'm going to grab its corresponding co piece, which is this one right here. And we're going to go ahead and attach this now onto here. So we're going to put that right sides together. There's no seams to match. And we're going to come over here just like this. And I'm going to start right before it by lifting my foot and just putting it down. And I'm just going to stitch this way. And notice I have not went and pressed anything. I'm just doing this like that. So now I'm going to finger press this back towards the piece I just added, just like this. Now at this point, you can take it to the iron if you want and make it flat. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. All right, it's nice and flat. We're gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna turn the camera so you could see. I'm gonna grab this piece and this piece because now we need to add those on. We're just going to grab both of those, trying to keep everything in order. We're going to come back over here to the machine and we're going to attach them. So I'm going to go ahead and lay that to the side. I'm going to start with my little square first. And I'm going to put him on here just like this. And there is one seam to match because I was supposed to press this towards the um, background, the center square. So let me fix that real quick at the iron. It's supposed to go towards the center square because there's now nesting seams. Okay, like I was saying, nesting seams. So I pressed all these towards the dark, but now we're going to press everything in. So it's always going to go towards the, the piece that you added on. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> I'll probably just leave that in instead of editing it out. <laughs> All right, let's add this one now. So I'm going to put this one on here, right sides together. And now those two seams are in opposite directions and should nest. So I'm just going to use my finger to nest them up nicely. And I'm going to go ahead and sew this through just like this. And I'm going to come right here. But when I get to the end of this piece, I'm just going to veer off. Or in my case, stop sewing. So now I'm going to go ahead and Press this under, so towards the center, towards the center, just like that. And I'm going to grab this second piece. And before I iron, I'm just going to put this one on this other side. So it's going over here, just like that. Essentially, what we're doing is making a braid. So I'm going to line this up, and you can turn it over like this if you want to, and sew it on. So I'm going to line it up. Line that up just like this. Put it on here. And you can see my seam is now going to get forcefully bent this way. 
And when I get to the end, I'm just going to veer off. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and finger press this one towards the center. So towards my big piece. Come on. Just like that. And I'm going to take it over to the iron now and press that real quick. So now we have a unit that looks like this. Everything is pressed in towards that center square. Now we're going to go over here and look again. Now I need this piece and this piece. So I'm going to just bring these two over to the machine with me. Just like this. And we're going to go ahead and start with the small square first. We're going to line it up. Again, those seams should be in opposite directions. See, nesting in opposite directions. We're going to sew this on here. If you have a thread cutter, it's easier to just stop and cut thread instead of veering off. Again, I'm going to flip that underneath so that the seam is going towards the center. And before I iron, I'm going to grab this piece now and I'm going to attach him on here just like this. And again, you can go from underneath, above, over, however you want to turn it to sew. You're always going to be laying this back out anyway, so you shouldn't get anything out of order. Just keeping it nice and lined up. Just like this. And again, I'm going to just flip this seam under towards the center. Just like this. And I'm going to take this over to the iron and give it a nice press. So now we just need to, again, grab this piece and this piece. And then after that, we're going to grab these. And I won't turn the camera for that next step. I'm just going to go ahead and add these on. and grab the next ones and add those on. So let's sew these on now. We're going to start with the little one, always starting with the little one. Line it up, nest that seam. It's nesting nicely. I always, always flip it under and press towards the center. Just like this. I'm going to grab that second one now, right sides together. Again, nothing to line up or nest. And we're just going to stick it up under here like this. And so on down. Again, it's going to go towards the bigger section, flipping it underneath, just like this. I'm going to take this over to the iron and then I'll attach my next piece. All right, now for the smaller one. Put this on here. Going to nest that seam up. Just fill it with my fingers, or maybe not, or maybe so. <laughs> Lining everything up. Sew it down, finger press it. At, the po at this point, you can go to the iron if you want to every single time, but I'm just finger pressing for now. If you don't want to use your finger, find yourself a seam roller or a finger wooden stick. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and add this one on. Again, you can put it on this way and sew from here to here, or you can flip the whole thing upside down and line it up that way and sew it on just like this all right and again before i go to the iron i'm just gonna help it along the way making it easier to press by flipping it back just like this and there we have it. So I'm going to go over to the iron and press this and then we'll go to the next step. All right. So here is the section that we have just sewn just like this. We're going to flip it around the way it needs to go and lay it down back right here just like this. So, so far, half of it is sewn just like this. Now, the other half 
seems like it's going to be a little tricky, but it's not. We're going to start with, again, our small piece. I mean, our yeah, small piece right here. We're going to sew this on. And I know it looks like a disaster, but what we're going to do to start this small piece, just so that everything is laying nice and flat, is just lay it just like this. We're going to grab the ruler and we're going to grab a rotary cutter and I'm going to line it up with this edge really nicely. And I'm going to make that cut right there just like that. So those are now gone. And the same with this side. As soon as this is sewn on, we're going to come back over here and cut off this other section. So I'm going to go over and we're going to sew this piece on real quick. All right. So again, we just cut this nice and straight. Although it looks like it's not, it is because everything gets trimmed. Trust me, this will work out. May look funky at first, but it's going to work out. So we're going to go ahead and slide this under. Quarter inch seam. Just like this. And I'm going to go ahead and finger press this again towards my center. So I'm always pressing towards the, my main center block. What we're going to do now is press this and go over to the cutting mat. All right, so you can see I have it pressed. I'm at the cutting mat. I'm going to grab that next piece. And again, we're going to lay this right up here where it's supposed to go, just like this, nice and straight. And we're going to take our ruler again. And we're going to line it up right here, nice and straight with the whole entire thing, and make a cut. So we're going to take off the little excess piece just like that. And now we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew down here. Here we go at the sewing machine. I'm going to line this up, line that end up just like this. Line it all the way up. And again, we're going to press this towards that center. And if it doesn't behave, take it to the iron and do it there. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so I am placed back down right here. I know I'm on the correct side because this is a solid square. You will be wrong if you have it on this side right here. Although you could sew it on this side if you wanted and have everything going one way. But the point of this table runner is this direction. So again, I have one, two, three, four more units left to sew. And I'm going to take right sides together. Again, since everything's being pressed towards the center, all of these seams are going to nest. So I'm going to put this on, then I'm going to add this. I'm going to put this on, then add this. And the rest of this, I'm just going to put in fast forward while I sew these on here. All right, so at this point, we should have a nice braided piece that looks like that. Oh, it's so awkward, right? But we're going to get on to the next step and continue to unawkward this thing. And we're going to grab our background fabric again. And we're going to go and make two cuts. So I'm just going to open this up now because I've been cutting on the fold. So I've been cutting way more than I need, but I'm using all my leftover pieces towards something else anyway. So, all right. So here we have this nice and open. We're going to go ahead and cut off two nine inch squares. So this ruler right here is eight and a half. So I'm going to line this up on a line and I'm going to come over right here and lay the half inch mark down on the line because this is eight and a half and this makes nine, this extra half. So nice and lined up. I know I'm cutting more than I need, but like I said, I always use my excess for my scrap bins anyway. 
So I'm going to go ahead and cut that. And then I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to cut it nice and straight right here. Can you even see that? No, you cannot. All right, we're going to cut it nice and straight right here. And then I'm going to come over and put this on a line and come over nine inches again. So I'm just going to line up my half inch mark on the closest line because everything's lined up. And I'm going to go ahead and make that cut. So this is just going to go in my scrap pile. And then I'm temporarily done with that temporarily, like I said. And then I'm going to take my two nine inch squares and I'm going to cut them on the diagonal from corner to corner one time. So I'm leaving my straighter grain here and here, here and here. So my bias is only right there. And it's important for this part because we're going to take these now. We're going to grab our little weird looking table runner at the moment. And we're going to be attaching these to these ends right here and right here, as well as the other side. So let me back you up just a little bit so you can see just a little better. We're going to be attaching these on this side and on that side. And the reason why I kept it straight a grain here and along this outer sides is because we're going to be trimming this whole thing anyway. And the rest of this is all on the bias. So we need something on here that's going to stop it from being too uh, wonky stretched, you know. So what we're going to do <laughs> is sew these on on both ends. And they're going to hang over, but we want the hangover because I want some room between this point and these edges. So I'm actually going to take this right here. I'm going to kind of center it on here. I'm going to put it on here like this where I have quite a bit of hangover. You can even scoot it up right here like this where there's about a quarter inch on this end and the rest of the hangover is up here. That's actually good if you want to do it that way because remember we can still trim everything down if it's too much for you. So we're going to take this now over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew on this piece and then we're going to go ahead and attach the other and then we're going to repeat it on the other side. All right here we are at the sewing machine. Again I only have a quarter inch hanging on that side and again that's perfectly fine. It is 100% a-okay. Just remember that this is a bias running along a straighter grain. So I'm just keeping it on the top. Nice and flat. And again, I can just stop just like that. I'm going to take this over to the iron and I am going to press this under towards the whole center again. I'll try to be very careful with it because this is a bias seam right here. So I'll be right back. Now that it is on there, I'm going to go ahead and you can see it's hanging over quite a bit, but that is perfectly fine. We're going to take our other piece and we're going to put that right sides together on here, just like this. And with a pair of scissors, or you can go to the um, cutting mat, with a pair of scissors, I'm just going to snip away along the edge right here, just like that. So that triangle is now off, as you can see, is hanging over quite a bit. We're going to lay this under here and sew a quarter inch seam and hold on to it quite nicely because this table runner definitely already has a little tiny bit of weight to it. So it's wanting to yank while it's hanging. All right, so again, I'm going to be finger pressing this and then going to the iron and pressing it towards the center, towards the center. So I'm going to go over to the iron and do that, and then we'll attach the other sides. All right, so here is my, my other side sewn. I'm just going to put this side on now. So again, I'm going to put it right sides together with a large hangover on the top side. So I'm just going to go right here. I have about a quarter inch on the bottom. Honestly, it doesn't matter. It just depends on how much hangover you want. I'm going to go ahead and sew this on very carefully. I'm not going to move much. Now that that is on here, we're going to press this towards the center. I decided to turn you so that you can see that next piece is going to go on right here like this and it's going to hang over quite a bit just like that about a quarter inch hanging over on this end 
And what I'm going to do, just so that you guys can see with a ruler, just going to line it up right here and cut that off. And oops, I'm cutting from an angle that I can't see the other side. <gasps> All right, so that's cut off. I'm going to go ahead now and we're going to sew this on here. Here we are at the machine. Sewing it on. Once this is on, we're going to go to the iron and press it towards the center. So you can see it's on here now. And I'm just going to flip it under like this. I'm going to take it over to the iron and we're going to press it out. My ironing board has a big, huge stain from stuff on it, but I'm going to show you right here where we're at. This is the side I just sewed on. So I want it, I finger pressed it slightly in. We're going to just take the iron now and push it back so that everything stays nice and flat. And as you can see, I now have a very, very funky looking piece going on here, but that's okay because now is the fun part. I'm just pressing the whole thing out nicely. It's sitting beautifully. It's nice and flat. If you keep all of your seams in towards the center each and every single time, it'll stay super flat. You won't have too much bias stretch going on in these areas. We don't want it to stretch too bad, you know, and that is way, why I built it like I did because and press everything a certain way so that we don't have as much stretch going on in this um, on the bias. If, if not, this whole thing would start bowing like this and you definitely don't want that. If your piece is bowing, you need to take and starch or press it or something and make sure that all of your seams are flipped the way I said. All right, so let's go over to the cutting mat. This is such a large project that I need so many things moved out of my way just to be able to do what we're doing here. All right, here is our nice piece right here. Both sides you can see are nice and flush. I want to leave those as nice and flush as possible this whole entire time. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim this now. But since everything is laying so flat, I'm going to actually trim this the easy way. I'm going to fold it in half and since I'm trying to show you guys the whole thing in the camera frame, I'm going to match up this end right here. I'm going to put these two corners together, matching them up so that when I fold this back, this piece is matching that piece perfectly, just like that. And these come down just a smidge. There we go. And I'm going to keep it folded in half just like this. It's nice. It's flat. Just like that. Okay. And we're going to trim this thing. Now I'm going to line, since these top bo and bottom right here are straight, or as straight as they can be at the moment, I'm going to line up right here on this line over here. And as well as my fold is going to get lined up right here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take a long ruler and I'm going to come in to right at this joint right here. I'm going to come down from it just a smidge because I want to make sure that I'm getting the bottom side one as well. So you can look right here and make sure. I'm just going to line it up nicely. I'm going to check to make sure that I'm hitting at those points. Down just a little bit more like this. And there is no real specific measurement. You can measure from the center out. So say my ruler is an eight and a half inch ruler. Say I want to cut it right here. I can. And that's marked at the five from the inside. Right here is at the six. So you could line it up where your center comes out right here at the six and line it up to where your center comes out at the six down here. And actually, no, it needs to come back just a little bit. We're going to put it at the five and three quarter inch mark. How about that? That'll be perfect. And everything will stay nice and flat. So I have a flat line here. I have a flat line there. Well, mostly we're going to grab this cutter and I'm going to cut that off. And this can be put in my scraps. No big deal. We're going to move that out of the way. And I'm going to do the same thing, but 
the other side now. So I'm going to turn the whole thing around. I'm going to line it up on this line right here on this side, as well as this is kind of lined up, even though I'm still going to trim it some more. I'm going to do that same thing, I guess. We'll just come to five and three quarters coming out this center right here. Five and three quarters. Everything's lined up there. Oops. Nice and straight. My center is at my five and three quarter inch mark. I'm going to check and make sure all of these are got. Yep, they are. It's nice and straight. I'm also going to look right here and see if I'm on a line. It's on that half inch mark right there. And half inch mark right there. So it now is on a line and looks wonderful this way. It looks wonderful this way. And that side I'm still going to straighten up. So now I'm going to cut. Oops, it missed that one. You got to remember there's some bulky seams right there because they're all stacked on top of each other. All right, now that that's done, I'm just going to go ahead and make this side nice and straight real quick. I'm going to go ahead and line it up. So I'm lining up these lines right here and everything seems to be nice and straight. Come right here and cut that off. And it looks as if, let's mark from the one right here, that we are at 11 and a half inches wide, which is very good. That's what we're looking for. So it is 11 and a half inches. Here's that so far. Next step. Woohoo! Next step already. <laughs> All right, my next step we're going to do, but I'm going to come back close again so I have room to move around. All right. Do you remember all those pieces from cutting? Well, we're going to find from these leftover two and a half inch squares, we're going to find all the colors from this center. We're going to find all the colors that were on this side. So I see I have this guy on that side. I have this guy on that side. I have this one on this side. Um, this one is on this side and the purple one. So the rest of them, as you can see, now go on this side. So I have this blue one, the purple one, the brown one, the yellow one, and that other blue. So what we're going to do is I'm going to keep these in order just like this. And I'm going to come from this side and keep these in order from the outside in just like that. And I'm going to take these over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew them together. Here we are at the machine. So I'm going to put one stack out of the way. I'm going to take these fellers and I am just going to sew them together. If I can sit down and do this. We're going to open it up. Just going to give it a little finger press to one side. No big deal what side it goes to. Put this one on. Open it up. Grab the next. Attach it. All right, open it up. I'm just going to finger press these and that last one. And then we're going to take this over to the iron. But before I do that, I'm going to sew the other sides. All right, so there's one side's worth. Now let's take these guys and sew these guys together. All right, sides together, quarter inch seam. Just finger pressing them. Doesn't matter which way, they're just gonna lay flat either way. Just like this. Grab another. And the last one. Put this on here. But before I go to that iron, all right, you know all those six and a half inch pieces that we still had sitting next to us? We're going to grab four of them. Two, three, and four. So there we have it. Those are the four. We're going to put one on each side. So I'm going to put one on this side right here. And then I'm going to turn it around and put one on this side right here. And I'm going to repeat that with this guy. So I'm going to go ahead and one side, turn it around, and do the other side. Just like that. Now let's go over to the iron and press them.
We have this big disaster going on here at the cutting mat. But at this very moment, what I'm going to do is one more time, I'm going to make sure how wide this is. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and a half. So since both sides are eleven and a half, we're going to move that out of the way. We are going to grab these right here. And I am going to cut these to eleven and a half inches. So here they are right there. And I am going to see 11 and a half where that goes to 11 and a half. Look at this. It's going to have like a quarter inch on each end, just like this right there. So I'm going to have a small bit on each end. So we're going to go ahead and make this cut. And my pieces obviously were over measured, but that is okay. We're going to come over here to this side now, just like this. And now I'm going to cut them to 11 and a half. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and the half mark right here. Oops, did I not do 11 and a half? I'm a dummy. It's okay. We're going to make this work. I did over measure. Look at that because I'm doing it from the wrong side. All right. We're going to go ahead now and center these on here because I overcut by half an inch. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm just going to center it on here and then I'll trim it off in a second instead of trimming off a quarter inch on each end. So I'm going to center it on here and sew these on real quick. I'm going to go to the sewing machine and do that. Before I sew it on, I'm also going to make sure that this is the color that's on this side. So I'm going to put about a quarter inch on hang overhang on both sides because this is a half inch bigger than it needs to be, but we're going to make it work. I put this under here. I'm going to sew it on here. And it's good that this is a straight -a grain right here because it helps this stay nice and lined up. Everything is lined up. Just like this. All right, I'm going to turn this whole thing around and I have the blue on this side. So I'm going to put the blue at the top, just like this. Again, I'm going to center it on here. About a, I got about a quarter inch on each side. You can trim yours to 11 and a half, but my boo-boo cut happened when I was cutting. So you can watch yours and make sure that yours is a boo-boo cut. Just measure before you cut. You know, just to make sure, because I looked at my ruler once and saw 11 and a half, but I guess I was wrong because I was cutting from in front of my ruler, not from behind my ruler. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and press these. All right, so I'm nice and pressed. What I'm just going to go ahead and do is take my ruler and my rotary cutter, and I'm going to just square this off of here, just like this. I'm going to go ahead and do the same on this side right here. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I can even see by putting my head over. <laughs> so I'm literally just cutting off a quarter inch on each side. But make sure yours goes to the size you need it. And I'm just going to cut right here. You probably can't even see what I'm doing. Just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this side too. If I hold my ruler just right, I can actually cut just like this. You just have to hold your ruler very carefully to do that. All right. So I know they look a little off, but that's okay because we still have to put some borders on here now. So I'm going to move this out of the way just like this. And we're going to add some borders. So grab your background print. And since I don't have selvage to selvage on this, I'm going to be piece. I have to piece mine. So what I'm going to do is I am going to cut four, five, because I'm piecing it. I think two of these should work. How Let's see how wide this is because I don't have a full length. Nope, it's not that. So I'm going to cut three for the top and three for the bottom and then two for the sides. So we're going to cut two and a half inch strips off of here. So here's one, two, and then so I'm going to cut six total for the top and bottom. Notice I'm not using my long ruler. All right, and one more cut for the top and bottom, and then I'll cut one more cut after that for my sides. If you were using your full length strip, then this should be the full length of one, like from end to end here, should be the full length of one full jelly roll strip or two and a half inch strip or background strip. You know what I'm saying? So you only need one strip from one side to the other, and then you'll need the second strip for the half this side and this side. So 
since I am not doing that, unfortunately, I need more strips, but you only need three. All right, one more cut for me. So my sides, so two and a half inches, just like that. And those would be my sides. And now remember, you needed three quarters of a yard, but I did not because I did not have that. So I'm using scraps. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the selvage off of all of these. And then I'm gonna attach three together for my top and three together for my bottom. I really don't like a ton of seams, but again, I'm using scraps, so I guess it's okay. All right, so I'm gonna line this one up. And then these, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the selvage off of these two as well, because they're gonna be on my sides. They should be the length I need. If not, I'll piece my extra little six inch, six and a half inch pieces that I had on, you know. That one off and cut that one off. I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and attach all three of these and all three of these together. You technically don't need to do this step because you should have a full length strip that should fit your table runner at this point. So just cut three strips. I needed three <laughs> pieces of scrap <laughs> for each of these. So I'm just put mine right sides together and I'll have seams, but that's okay. All right, I'm going to grab my other three as well, hook them together. And grab this one, put that on here and sew it. All right, now I'm just going to press mine and then I should be able to sew them on to the top and bottom of my project. All right, my pieces are pressed. Yours should be the right length like 42 inches or so. All right, I'm just gonna attach mine on as if they were one long strip. like that and now we're going to take those side pieces and yours is a half a strip oh look at this so i look how close i am let me roll this up real quick i literally yours is uh, you know measured to your half of jelly roll so right now we're at 15 and a half inches so i'm going to cut this to 15 and a half inches and this to 15 and a half inches and i should have them exactly the size i need so let's go to the cutting mat you know i have quite the mess <laughs> going on but I'm going to measure this just to make sure so I am at exactly 15 and a half and I'm going to measure the other side as well it should be 15 and a half as well if everything was pieced together beautifully and it was so there's both of these need to be cut to 15 and a half and then we're going to sew them on and again you only needed the one strip for that I had to cut two off my thing which still wasn't the full selvage to selvage but it made it all right so I'm going to straighten up this edge just ever so slightly. I know that this ruler is 15 inches from here to here. So here's my 15 and that would be my half. So I'm going to add half right here at this end, making sure my first end is lined up, cutting my half there, lining up the whole entire strip. There we go. So I'm barely cutting anything off. And now we're going to sew one to each end of the table runner. And I'm just going to leave you guys back here like this while I do this. All right. Look, and I didn't have to add an extra piece like I did on the top and bottom. <laughs> but if I had one strip, it would have worked. All right. Right sides together. And I'm going to sew this on. Just like this, keeping everything nice and flat. It's cut to size, so the end should match up. All right, turn the whole thing around and do the same to this side. So again, right sides together. The ends should match up just like this at the end. It should be the correct size, but always measure before you do it because this table runner does not give you 100% accurate cuts only because 
everybody's is never going to end up the same for how wide this section is. So just remember that. That's why I didn't have an exact number for you guys, because not everybody's is going to come to the same points right here away from here. So just know that it's going to be different for some people than it is for others. So make sure you measure before you do anything else. So I'm going to press these and meet you at the table. Next step. So here's what it looks like so far. You could leave it like this and not use the um, half a yard that I have for the borders. You, you can leave it just like this. It's done at this point. But I'm adding extra border to this because I want it to be just a little bit bigger. But this is the size of an average table runner almost. This is 15 and a half by 45 and a half. So this is the perfect size table runner. But I want mine to be for a, like a big table. So we're going to go ahead and show you the whole thing at the moment. I'm going to fold this back up and I'm going to cut three, four, yeah, four strips of my half yard that I, I overestimate this stuff, guys. I never give you an exact amount. I always overestimate because you never know how much further you want to go with it or if you want to change your size of things. So I'm going to go ahead and press this real quick because it's been in a drawer for a while. You can tell that is much better now. <laughs> I'm going to find a ruler. See, I keep putting the camera in front of my way. <laughs> okay, now it's not. <laughs> I am going to go ahead and line this up on a line and I'm going to straighten up this half yard of fabric All right here. just like this. Okay, now that I have it nice and straight, I'm going to make sure because for some strange reason that one piece didn't look like it came all the way to the edge, but it looks like it did. All right, I'm going to cut three and a half inch border to go all the way around. So I need five strips. So I'm going to go ahead and I don't know, we're going to see right now. I'm not thinking. Told you it's a bad day. I actually have a headache while filming this, but I'm making it work to... Um, three and I'm going to come closer to me so that I'm not blocking the camera too much and this will be the fourth cut and I have room to cut another one. I measured this to cut three and a half inch strips so I'm pretty sure I needed the four but you know what I'm going to go ahead and just cut the fifth one just to straighten this out and if anything it can go in my bin and this will be nice and straight because that should have got the whole thing. I mean, it was kind of wonky in the first place, but all right, I'm just going to move that out of the way. I'm going to take all of these now and I'm going to connect. I'm going to take off the salvage and connect them end to end. And you're going to see why in a moment. So we're going to line these up just like this. Salvages are going to get chopped off all at the same exact time. One more. Come on. Open up there. I'm going to cut all the salvages off at the same exact time. Got it all right. Yep, I did. Okay, and we're going to take this over to the machine and I'm going to connect all of them together. If you have never seen me do this, this is actually really easy for borders. So here's my stack. I just chopped all the selvages off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that bottom strip and throw it out of the way. That means the next two pieces are going to be right sides together. So I'm going to slide those through. That means the next two, again, should be right sides together. I'm going to slide those through. And the last two pieces should be right sides together. This last one should be right side out. And you can do that method with any border fabrics to cut them to size. So now they're all sewn together into one continuous long strip. I'm going to go ahead and press this real quick. And I'm going to do that off camera. I'm just going to press these um, to one side or the other on the whole entire thing. Make this whole entire thing nice and flat. And we're actually going to cut these to size of the table runner. And I'm going to show you my way of doing so without having to do math measurements. Okay, so my piece is pressed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my table runner. And again, you don't have to do this border if you don't want to. You can leave it as it is, just like this. But I want more. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this right here. I'm going to straighten it out. And give it a good press so that I have a nice accurate laying piece and I'm going to leave it on my ironing board. Now if you don't have an ironing board late in your cutting area or you're just going to have to do the math measurements. <laughs> but I am trying to avoid 
racking my brain any further. So what I'm going to do is I have a seam right here. I don't want it to land right here at the end, just like this. I don't, I don't want the seam there at the end. So I'm going to kind of move it up just, I don't know, like this much. That's a lot, but I'm going to move it up just that much. I'm going to lay this over the quilt just like this and line it nice and flat as if I'm going to start sewing it on now, just like this, lay it nice and flat. And I'm going to take this one side here closest to you. I'm going to fold it over onto itself just like this. And I I am going to cut it. I'm going to hold it and cut it just like that. So now I have a nice straight line there. This can be used for the side if I want it, keeping it all nice and flat, just the size I need it to be. And at this point, I'm going to do one more measurement again, just because I told you guys it should be somewhere around. And I forgot since I sewed, that's why 45 and a half by and a half. All right, so I'm going to come over to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to fold it on top of itself. I'm going to line that end up like this, and I am going to make myself a nice, looks good to me. I'm going to hold it flat with my hand across the whole thing, make the cut. Now I'm going to take this other piece right here and I'm going to lay it up here on this one. And just as if I was going to be pinning it on or something, I'm going to lay it nice and flat on there. Line up my end. My seam does not land at an edge, which I want. I don't want a seam at the edge. I'm going to fold this on top of itself again, just like this. And I'm going to hold it with my hand and make the cut. So I have a nice, perfectly sized piece. And these last pieces are going to go on after these are sewn on. So let's go to the sewing machine and sew these on. Okay, at this point, now all we have to do is add our side. So again, I'm just going to lay this on here right at that top down here at this side. I'm going to fold it over onto itself. And that is where I'm going to make my cut so that it is to size. And I'm going to do the same with this other one. Just like this, I'm going to lay it on here, lining that end up, lining this bottom side up, fold it over onto itself, straightening everything out. I'm going to go ahead and make this cut first because I'm down here. And that's what we have left. So it was just enough strips for all this. And then we're going to go ahead, since I'm here now, and cut this one. So all I need to do now, put you back and fast forward with some music while I sew down both those sides. to get this in a full frame. So that's the best you're going to get. But there is the table runner, just like that. You can see it looks so awesome. So awesome. I love it. It is fabulous. All right. Let's take its final measurement. Okay, I'm reaching over. We're going to look and see how big this came out 51 by 21 and a half so it's definitely great for a nice big table or i don't know anywhere heck you can even hang it on the wall if you wanted to honestly so there it is i think it looks fabulous and there we have the finished card table table runner i hope you enjoyed watching that it was so fun to make it goes together pretty quickly there's the whole thing let me bring it this way so you can see the colors better. Obviously, this is the only way I can show it to you in full. 
so you guys can see it better since I'm self recording. That's the name of the quilt. Block, lock, plural, one. It's one solid piece. I'm calling it card table. Why? That's what it looks like. And you will see if you stick around to the end of this video. Fun, fun, fun. Today's table runner is card, card, card. Hmm. Can't talk. Hmm. Oh well, I'll just leave that there. And I'm not going to edit out the stupid stuff. I'm just going to leave it here for you to watch because <laughs> it's funny. Or not. I don't know. <laughs> Start over. Tutorial. I mean, there's going to be some sped up fast forward music areas. All you need is, well, some supplies like scrap. I think so. I don't know. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to check out the video right here and the playlist right here and subscribe above my head and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.